hello everyone to the gender equality in the era of human augmentation, technology transfer for conservation, quality education, yeah, yeah, yeah. and gender equality presentation. I will share my screen with you now. The Human Augmentation is a recent think piece published by the UK Ministry of Defence, May 2021, designed to set the foundations for more detailed research and development. Uh, what's new here is that the publication accepts for a fact that technology is a form of an evolutionary augmentation to our human existence, as we see in the illustration. A concept that I presented back in 2014 in a form of an open letter to the IUCN World Congress then, proposing that we are not just another species and that the correction of the human taxonomic identity is way overdue, that we are rather a highly complex kingdom of life, so to speak, comprising a biological, physical and socioeconomic entanglement that I call the Homo cybernetica. The difference between the human augmentation perspective and that of the Homo cybernetica, though, is that the human augmentation illustration implies an increase in size and a guaranteed enhancement. It also seems to present such augmentation in total isolation of the intellectual and socioeconomic context, presenting humans as mere users of technology and subject to its modification, which is only one side of the coin. The other side, of course, is that we are the maker of technology, triggering into existent new species of uh, machines and organizations through the uniquely human faculty of observation known as the third order cybernetics. Now back to the human augmentation, seen in isolation from any cultural, socioeconomic or systematics perspective, especially uh, in, in a warfare context, is alarming because technology is generally mediated by an economic system deeply rooted in inequality and competition and might, if not appropriately addressed, continue to intensify injustice among people, genders and species, and that is a recipe for failure on the long run. The more viable way is to focus on the unity of kind, the role of communication and mobilization of energy into our organization through social and eco-friendly innovation. Human augmentation then, as good as it sounds, does not make us necessarily bigger, more efficient or more adapted on an evolutionary level. Unless with a certain collective awareness, we prefer integrated technologies that boost synergies among people, species and genders and favor working in harmony with nature over individual evolutionary leaps, so to speak, oblivious uh, or disruptive of communities and the environment. On the evolutionary level, biologists uh, uh, in still consider us as just another species of mammals, but the way we interact with technology, the way we created or triggered the existence of technology through knowledge of the uh, natural laws and the natural selection and the dynamics of nature and the cycles. So all this makes us different uh, from other animal, animals. That's why we are presenting here today some technologies that are in harmony with nature and create synergy uh, among communities because collaboration is a technology, solidarity is a technology, organic agriculture is a technology because it's based on our knowledge and application of our observation of the natural cycles. We are meeting today uh, Ricardo from uh, uh, Mexico uh, uh, owner and uh, manager of uh, the Latinantas, and so we're meeting right. like, hello, and we meet Hi, everyone. from Bolivia, the uh, managers in Proimpa. In okay, Jihan. Um, good afternoon in Bolivia. Good afternoon. Hi, everyone. Right here. Can you see my presentation? Uh, that's great. Yes, we can see you. Nice. Okay. Huh? Perfect. So, excuse me, Vilma. Okay. 
Can you see? Yes. All yes. right. Can everyone <clears throat> can you all see? Mm. David, Ricardo, can you see? I can say yes, I can see. All right. Okay, great. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, Jamie, start, please. Okay. Um, thank you so much for your invitation. Uh, my name is Jimmy Ciancas Jimenez from Bolivia. I am grateful to be participating in this uh, meeting. Uh, I am on behalf of ProIMPA Foundation, which is Fundación ProIMPA in Spanish. Uh, it's a kind of NGO. Uh, we are working a lot with uh, small produ producers, small farmers. Um, right now, I would like to talk about the sustainable agriculture through the use of microbial biotechnology. Uh, this is a, a kind of a great concept for us because uh, we are working a lot with this uh, in this uh, area. I just wanna, uh, I just want to talk about the, what is the main mission and vision for Preimpa Foundation. We are working hard in trying to promote the innovation. I'm not talking about the technology innovation for small producers. Uh, and also we are working in trying to manage the sustainable and use of agrobiodiversity. Uh, the small producers, they don't have uh, access to the big markets in Bolivia. We have a kind of a strat strategy for, for them. And also we want to produce and look for big markets for them, trying to uh, transfer technology. What kind of technology? We already uh, are uh, getting money from supporters uh, coming from mainly from Europe and North America. Uh, in that way, we want to uh, increase this uh, transfers of technology to them. And also, I would like to talk about the vision. Preimpa Foundation is a science and technology organization. We want to generate positive impacts uh, in favor of the small producers. How we work in Preimpa Foundation. We, uh, we research, we develop, and we transfer this technology. And um, all that money, what we get, uh, thanks to this, uh, to these processes, we just, we reinvest to universities, we reinvest to small producers. Uh, we are also able to pay to uh, our technicians. And um, also, uh, I would like to talk about uh, some, uh, some concepts. For example, how we can use the microorganisms in favor of the agriculture. I'm not talking about the green agriculture. Uh, based on sustainability and profitability. Uh, for example, we are just researching, trying to look for group promoters uh, for uh, some uh, bioinsecticides. For uh, why we are looking for that kind of microorganisms like a bacteria, fungi, or actinomycetes, because we want to give to the agriculture some, uh, some chance to uh, apply a beneficial uh, microorganism. So, and uh, talking about the agrobiodiversity, uh, I'm not talking about the, 
biological and public policy source to generate economic opportunities. So uh, we in Bolivia, we have a bunch of uh, species of microorganisms. We have uh, different types of soils. We have different types of uh, crops. So in that way, uh, we have some uh, strategies for uh, to work. And in that way, we can just uh, feed uh, to uh, small producers. Uh, and also, uh, I would like to talk about the, what does inclusive market mean? Uh, we want to uh, create some mechanisms in order to uh, create create opportunities or chance to small producers to take those uh, those products to the big markets. Uh, well, everything is just based on uh, how we can transfer this technology going from uh, ProImpa Foundation to uh, this uh, to this population. Uh, well, as you can see right here, uh, uh, Anjihan knew this place. This is uh, part of uh, the Uni Salar, Salar de Uni in Bolivia, which is, uh, it, this is one of the highest uh, lake of salt in over the world, above the 4,000, over the 4,000 meters above the sea. And uh, the low fertility in this area is very high. I'm not talking about the uh, frost, drought. Uh, I'm talking about the uh, high concentration of salt, hail, um, and the and the quinoa producers. If they want to increase the their yields, they need to fertilize the soils. That's why Proimpa Foundation are trying to look at new opportunities based on microorganisms. Phosphorus solubilizers, nitrogen fixers, uh, group promoters, and also bioinsecticides too, in order to take control uh, about the soil fertility uh, and uh, and also about the control of uh, phytopathogens or something like that. The, I mean, I'm not talking about the integrated management of biotic and abiotic factors. Uh, I'm, I'm, and also we are looking for new markets. As Jihan uh, knows, this uh, area is just, uh, you can see a lot, uh, the poverty is very high. Um, I'm not sure. Eight per year, but it's very, it's very, it's very few. Um, hello, hello. Yes, hello. We can hear you. Okay. So based on that, uh, Prepa Foundation, we have uh, uh, worked with three. Uh, Three, with three uh, points, like uh, we are looking for agricultural microbiology, resiliency, and sustainability. So these three factors uh, are very important for us, using microorganisms. Um, we have the, 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 the power and the ability to adapt uh, to adverse situations with positive res results. Uh, I just... Uh, want to remember uh, uh, ten year, uh, five years ago we used to get a uh, support by the European community so uh, right now we are not getting any kind of money we are just making money by ourselves um, I'm not talking about sustainability uh, we are just uh, thanks to the research and development right now we are uh, just selling bioproducts based on microorganisms. That money comes uh, comes back again to Prepa Foundation, and uh, in order to uh, uh, in order to build or uh, in order to develop new bio inputs. So uh, in that way, 
we can make some money for us, for technicians, for some students coming from public and private sectors. Uh, yeah. So, uh, and also, uh, we are working also in the agroecological uh, topic. That means, and the intensification to improve soil health. Uh, how we can improve the soil health. Right now, we are just uh, producing this kind of bio inputs. What is the main goal for us? Is trying to improve, like I like I said, the the, the soil, uh, the, the health of the soil. Uh, we have a a bunch of bio inputs uh, going from bacteria, fungi, and actinomycetes, grow promoters, by insecticides. Uh, we have uh, phosphorus solubilizers, nitrogen fixers. Uh, so, um, and also, uh, we want, uh, I want to talk about the innovation networks. I mean, uh, we are working very hard and together with uh, the small producers trying to get new markets. And also they need to know about our bio inputs. And we, we can go this way together in order to have a chance to uh, improve the soil fertility. Uh, right now, okay. So uh, as you can see right here, for example, uh, you can see uh, some farmers with uh, technicians. Um, for example, right here, you can see the potato crops and the Prepo Foundation has the ability to control, for example, using pheromones for controlling maths. And also we are working in the regenerative agriculture to improve ecos ecosystems. Uh, right here, we can see a kind of a, a, a photo coming from 2004. Um, you can compare with uh, 2015, that's a big, big difference. Yeah. Um, what we are using for trying to take over the regenerative agriculture. Uh, we are using these bio inputs uh, and also we are using another types of uh, strategy, strategies uh, very close to the permaculture concept. And this, for example, you can see right here the quinoa, the quinoa uh, crop. So uh, this crop, uh, we didn't use any kind of uh, uh, chemical uh, chemical products. It's just uh, bio inputs. Mm, right here, uh, and also we are working too with native species. We want to look for uh, what is the uh, biodiversity and the behavior of this uh, native species. Uh, more photos of the quinoa crop right here. Uh, and also uh, we have kind of, uh, uh, we want to, uh, we uh, as, as part of the strategy of the, of how we can improve the, uh, the soils and the yield of the crop is just, uh, you can use a kind of barrier, uh, vegetable barrier, it's like a windbreakers, I mean, I, I'm not sure the, 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 the word, yeah. I guess it's that. Yes. <laughs> and right here too, more photos, right here. Yeah, it's just, this is the overview of the Salar, yeah. the, the, the Salar de Uyuni. Um, right here, uh, and also like uh, Chihan yeah. was talking about what, what the, what's the importance to work with uh, women. Uh, we understood in, we understood in Proimpa Foundation, it is very important to work with women. They are uh, 
very important part of this uh, agricultural process. Uh -huh. Right here, for example, uh, we have uh, a woman, which is, uh, she's working with a kind of a company, uh, which is, the, the, this place is uh, situated in Piusilla, uh, which is an organization with, uh, this one comes with 21 associates, uh, all, of, all of them just women. So they are just producing potato. Um, and also right now, thanks to this project, we are uh, looking for a, a new market for, for, for these uh, girls. So, and also uh, right here, Jihab, we are working again with another community, just trying to produce tarwi, which is uh, the, 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 the lupinus is a kind of, uh, this, this, this crop has a high concentration of protein. Women are uh, are very important part of this uh, production. Mm -hmm. These are machinery? Yes, this is, uh, uh, well, again, uh, uh, you know, you know what, uh, just uh, farmers are just, uh, uh, the, the, I mean, the leader of the family, I used to be uh, able to drive this kind of machinery, but right now women are right now we are teaching them to uh, to drive or manage this kind of machinery. Right now we have a project for 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 that too. So uh, here uh, we are uh, also another, we have another project where uh, women are uh, enrolled in the in trying to biotransform this crop uh, in just uh, trying to make a high concentration of protein for uh, sheep. So- have to move now to Ricardo. So yes. Please conclude. Oh, right. Okay. Just I wanna show you this uh, screen. Uh, yes. Well, this is with uh, our bio inputs and yes. this is a conventional agriculture jihad. Uh, I know the time is very, very short. Thank you so much to all of you. <laughs> Thank you, uh, Jimmy. That's, uh, that's wonderful. Thank you so much for the great presentation and your right. great work. Okay, Ricardo, would you like to let us know about oh, your work as well? Yes. Thank you. Hi, everyone. My name is Ricardo, and I'm going to share what happened here in Xochimilco. <laughs> Okay, everyone. Uh, nice to meet you. My name is Ricardo. Everybody see my screen? Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, my company, the name of my company, it's the La Chinampa. And my job, it's focused on try to rescue the lands because this is a very important area for, for Mexico City because also we create an equilibrium of, with the city. Here in the Chinampas, we grow food in an organic way. Uh, and my job has, has been work since 14 years ago. And I try to create organic agriculture in the lands because if we lost the Chinampas, we lost everything here because Xochimilco create a balance between the Mexico City and Xochimilco, because the soil who we have here in the in the Xochimilco area grow every year one or two centimeters. If the farmers don't back to the lands for continue uh, take the mud from the bottom of the canal, maybe we can lose this area, because the farmers they use the mud in every crop who they make. It means they move to the canals, they take the, the, the mud from the bottom of the canal and they, they create a, a seedlings on top of the land. Because the Chinampa, it's a small land who we have in the lake. The Chinampa word means bed of roots or bed of branches. Come from the Nahuatl word Chinamitl. And also Xochimilco means the fields of flowers. It's a word in Nahuatl, and is divided into words. Xochitl means flower, and Milko means the place. If you put together the word Xochimilco, it's the fields of flowers. 
because when the conquerors arrived to Mexico, they discover the floating gardens, but the Chinampas never floated. Uh, the Chinampas always stayed established on the lake because they are built with uh, stakes. The Chinampas are uh, stuck on the mud all the time. But in the Chinampas, we can grow many vegetables and flowers. Uh, this is my land, and if you can see here, different crops, because inside of the lands, we, we would like to grow permaculture, because if you have permaculture in the lands, you have everything, you have life. It's different if you have a monocultive inside, you need to use pesticides, because if the plagues arrive to the lands, you, they kill everything. But if you have permaculture, it means you have a diversified for products inside of the lands, you have everything because you have pollinators, you have bees, you have butterflies, you have a box inside, you have everything. And that is my goal, try to create permaculture on the Chinampas because you have a diversified of products and then you can feed the people who live in the city. And also the Aztecs make the same in that time. They feed 2,100 people from here. But what kind of technologies we use here? We don't have. We don't have any kind of, te of technologies because we have water and this is a problem who we have here in, in, the, in the Chinampas, no? Uh, we have a big problem here because the farmers, they only use, uh, this is a great view of the Chinampa with a drone, and maybe you can understand what happened here. Um, the indigenous, they can't use any technology here because only we, it's a man-made system. It means it's an artificial system and was built by the Toltecs 2000 years ago. But sometimes oh, we need new technologies for, for mix with the agriculture. It means just like uh, solar, pa solar panels, maybe we can have solar panels because for watering the crops in, in the dry season, it's, it's insane because it takes us six hours for, dry, for watering the lands. Maybe we need to use solar panels for have electricity inside, and maybe we can have much better crops. But uh, also we need to use small machines uh, because the work who we have in the Chinampas, it's a lot, it's a hard work. And we need a small machine for remove the soil for, for um, harvest the plants or sowing the seeds. And I think it's the only way for uh, we can grow in the Chinampas and we can have uh, more food. Because here we have some um, amazing points who we need to keep in Xochimilco. First one is because here we have volcanic soil and the volcanic soil is rich in minerals and that volcanic soil we use in every crops who we have here because the farmers when they sow in the seeds they take them they take the soil from the bottom of the canal and they make that very often and if you see the plots it's a small plot who we have and one of them they have different products they have uh, broccolis, they have cucumbers, they have beets, they have lettuces, they have cabbage, red cabbage, uh, cilantro, rosemary, parsley, everything we can grow here. But if we have um, much better technologies, not only for growth food, maybe always uh, we try to mix the technology with, with the farmers because also I have an e-commerce that people subscribe in the e-commerce and we harvest the baskets and uh, make a delivery of the baskets in the city, no? But that's my project. 
uh, is a project who have 14 years. I start to make the development of the project. And now, and also for take more money and help the farmers, I make tours for create conscience in the people who live in Mexico City and the people who live on the world. And this is my project. Thanks. Thanks, Thank Jihan, for the Thank opportunity. You. Thank you very much, Ricardo. This is very inspiring and amazing. Uh, we wish you all the best. And uh, as you. you said, uh, Ricardo, you might uh, not be using machinery technology, but you are uh, collaborating with nature and species and people. And this is yeah. uh, technology. Uh, the first, yeah. the, the first the type of mass technology is, is, is agriculture, or what we call now the uh, uh, organic agriculture, and using the principle of permaculture. So this is very successful and inspiring. And thank we, you. Um, in conclusion of this, thanks to everyone who participated, to Jimmy and uh, to you and to David, thank you very much. And the last uh, recommendation is we would hope that uh, uh, our way of incentivizing the, the technology and the innovation solutions that would uh, boost synergies among people and species and genders and nations and empower right. indigenous population and indigenous women in harmony with the dynamics of nature. Uh, and um, thank you for all the inspiring case studies and uh, wish you all the best. Thank you so much, Jihan, the best for you, you too. And I hope uh, that job helped you and help us for, for all of us. Oh, th thank you. I um, uh, don't know if there are any questions. Or would you be happy to conclude? Yes? Yeah, yes, we we'll, we'll find something. It's, it's, it's not a question. Um, I just wanted to say thank you to Marlon and Ricardo for very clear presentations. Uh, thank you um, so much. Uh, especially using you know, the overlaps with permaculture, using permaculture approaches. So thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Oh, it's a pleasure. Uh, thank you very much, mm -hmm. David, Jimmy, Ricardo, and see you all soon. All the best. Bye-bye. Right. The best for you. Thank you. Bye. Goodbye. Take care. Bye.